What is up ladies and gentlemen, my name is TopCap Gaming, and today I'm coming at you with a very special update video because we're not covering not one, not six, not nine, but 24 new possible weapons that could be implemented into the game of Team Fortress 2. Now why 24? Why such a specific number? Well, here's my answer. Based on what I've seen from Valve's news network, this screenshot right here is 24 weapons that have already been rendered into the game of Team Fortress 2 and are pretty much lying dormant in its code until they will be released sometime within the next few updates. Most likely some will be released during the Alien Invasion update and the Spy vs Engineer. And to some of you that still might have your doubts about to whether some or any of these weapons will be released, let me show you this screenshot right here from the Gunmetal Update homepage in the TF2 official website. Now this one is uh, the image right above the gameplay changes with the heavy and the engineer and the medic making balances to all the weapons. And so it's a pretty funny visual to actually look at, but if you haven't noticed the bottom right hand corner with that pile of weapons, we can barely make out what seems to be one of the new weapons that's going to be for the pyro, currently called in the workshop the afterburner, behind what appears to be both a scatter gun and a medic syringe gun. So hopefully this is kind of proof enough to kind of pique your interest as to these weapons being actual weapons being implemented into the game of Team Fortress 2. And personally, I think some of these weapons are wonderfully designed. And for all of you, be sure to uh, check all the links in the description for the weapons inside the workshop themselves. And be sure to give them a rating because a lot of people put in their time to make these weapons really nice. And who doesn't want to see a new weapon being implemented into Team Fortress 2? So with that being said, let me explain how the video is going to work. These first 12 weapons are going to be in this part 1, and the remaining 12 I'll cover in a part 2 that I'll release sometime after this video. And for this video in particular, we are covering weapons for the Sniper, the Spy, the Pyro, the Soldier, and the heavy and what I'm going to do to cover each of the weapons is I'm going to list off their name found within the workshop a description of the weapon from what I've compiled from suggestions left in my spy versus engineer weapon predictions videos along with some of the forums and custom game mode servers that I have visited and to top it all off I'll give a brief explanation as to how this weapon will kind of function in game. So with that being said, let's get started. So the first set of weapons we're going to be covering is for the sniper and the first weapon we have on the list is the piss slinging slasher. This weapon guarantees a critical hit for each successful headshot kill. However, the negatives are a 20% slower swing speed, a 30% slower weapon switch speed, and no random critical hits. So basically, you get more deadly with this weapon up close the deadlier you are from getting headshots from afar. However, the negatives make sure that you can't quickly switch to this weapon when you are immediately put into a close quarter situation. Next, we have the High Noon, and this one gives you a 35% faster weapon switch speed, and the clip size increases with headshots for a maximum of 6 shots in the clip before reloading. However, the negatives are a 30% less accurate when unscoped, a 20% slower charge rate, a minus 15 max health on wear, and to top it all off, there is a High Noon special effect in which it instantly kills enemies wielding the same weapon. So, similar to the half Zatoichi, the High Noon will one-shot any sniper that also is wielding the High Noon. So, to kind of talk about this, the main uh, bonus from the High Noon is having a large clip size. 
However, the negatives make sure that you can't just abuse the amount of headshots or uh, shots you can get off with the sniper. In addition to that, they also kind of help balance off being able to uh, no-scope snipers with the high noon effect uh, against snipers that also have the high noon. Next, we have the viewfinder. Now, this sniper rifle does not require ammo, and on hit, you highlight any enemy player or building to all friendly teammates for 4 seconds and to you personally for 9 seconds. And while scoped, pressing reload increases the zoom by 25% and pressing it again or unscoping resets the zoom. However, the negatives are, it fires tracer rounds, it has a 50% less damage against buildings, and no random critical hits. So this is basically a way to kind of tag enemies and buildings from afar and helping out your teammates, letting them know about enemies that might be around a corner, have low health, or are trying to get a jump or run away from a certain situation. The next two weapons we have are for the spy, and the first one we'll cover is the Secret Service. This knife has a 15% faster weapon switch speed, and on backstab it stores a charge, and while the weapon is active, the user gains a silent decloak at the cost of a charge. However, the negatives are you cannot switch weapons while decloaking, and you have a minus 20% damage vulnerability while uncloaked. So to put it into perspective, this knife rewards you for being able to get kills and being able to uh, sneakily cloak away and by doing so you are rewarded with the satisfaction of having a silent decloak making it easier to pry on unsuspecting victims however the negatives make sure that you're only able to use this knife in order to gain full advantage of the charges that you store and uncloaking at the wrong time can mean that you will die much easier the next weapon we have for the spy is the Shredder. It is a sapper that has a 25% faster building health drain speed, and it deals damage to engineers that hit it based on 20% of the building's drained health. However, the negatives are you lose 10 health when placing a sapper, sappers are removed with one hit, and finally, you cannot cloak while the sapper is active. So, with the Shredder, it does the job really quickly to sentries and other buildings that the engineer will have and to put the damage that engineers will receive from removing a shredder uh, say a full level sentry has uh, well it does have 216 health if half of that is missing because of the shredder and the engineer removes it they will take 20% of the missing health that is uh, been removed from that sentry. So basically around 22 points of health they will take for removing the sapper. However, the negatives for the spies shredder do make sure that the spies can't spam shredders on buildings as easy and sappers being removed one hit makes it pretty easy for engineers to get them removed in time. And the biggest downfall of them all you cannot cloak while the sapper is active, so you pretty much have to wait around the area until the, the job is done before you can actually uh, go invisible and go about your other shenanigans. Next up on the list that's uh, receiving quite a few weapons is my personal favorite, the Pyro. And so to start off, we'll talk about the Whack-A-Mole, and on hit, Target cannot jump for 8 seconds and movement speed is reduced by 15%. In addition, mini crits airborne targets and knocks them straight towards the ground. However, the negatives are a 25% slower firing speed and a 15% damage penalty. So with the Wakamal, you can imagine this being paired up with air blasting targets up into the air and then hitting them straight back down into the ground. Pretty much it's a melee version of the reserve shooter 
and the negatives for this weapon make sure that you can't just spam the amount of hits with this weapon against airborne targets and it kind of gives your opponent somewhat of a fighting chance to combat being air blasted up into the air and then being plummeted straight towards the ground. Next on the list we have the Firkin Flamer. So for this pyro weapon, the alt fire replaces an air blast with gasoline and targets covered in gasoline will have the duration of afterburn greatly extended. In addition, a 20% increased air blast range has been added. On top of all that, the negatives are a minus 10% damage penalty and air blast will no longer extinguish teammates. So similar to the phlogistonator, you're sacrificing your ability to help out burning teammates with the ability to do more damage to opponents over a long period of time with afterburn. And as a side note, I can imagine the pyros being covered with gasoline also receiving afterburn damage. Probably not a significant amount, but nevertheless just enough so pyros can also feel the heat. Next on this list is the kill factor and on hit versus burning targets you gain 20 health However, the negatives to this gun are a minus 50% reduced clip size and a 20% reduced damage versus non burning targets So being able to use this against a burning target you are gaining health back as they're taking more and more damage from afterburn and from being shot in the face. However, the negatives make sure that you can't uh, gain too much health with the reduced clip size and this gun becomes less viable when you're paired up against a target that can neither receive burn or are just generally straight up not on fire. Next on this list we have the afterburner. So for this one, it has a plus 10 increased afterburn damage, a plus 50% reduced air blast ammo consumption, a plus 30% reduced damage from reflected sources, and the negatives for this are a minus 25% damage penalty and a minus 25% fuel consumption rate. So this is somewhat of a kind of like this sticky uh, jumper and the rocket jumper in which you'll receive less damage from the reflected sources so this is a good weapon for pyros that want to know how to either reflect a jump the uh, easier will be able to train with this weapon and this weapon is more focused on using the air blast uh, at the offset of having reduced damage and uh, reduced or increased fuel consumption when trying to use their fire. So I recommend for all of you WM1 pyros to start learning the WM2 combo with this weapon. Next we have the compact combustor. Now this weapon has a 25% increased range of a plus 50 health on wear with the cost of a minus 30% slower weapon switch speed and a minus 10% reduced movement speed. So this is just a pyro uh, weapon to kind of make the pyro a bit tankier. Even though the pyro has a lot of resourceful tools, he seems to be pretty squishy when you're not able to actually air blast bullets away. So the plus 50% health, or sorry, not 50%, but just overall 50 health on wear uh, makes the pyro a bit tankier and a bit uh, more lasting in group fights. However, the negatives make sure that you don't become just a beefed up version of either a heavy or another tanking class while still having the same kind of movement speed and a weapon switch speed that you have when paired up with some of the other loadouts for the pyro. So the next two we have on our list for the soldier and the heavy only have one weapon, but nevertheless are still really good weapons for each of the classes to have. So for the soldier we have the follower. 
Uh, with this rocket launcher, when you hit alt fire, you slightly redirect the path of a rocket based on the position of your crosshair. And on top of that, it has a 20% increased projectile speed. However, the negatives are you cannot launch another rocket until the first rocket detonates or is reflected, and the second is a minus 10% damage penalty. So thinking about how the rocket could be guided was pretty tricky, but I feel the best decision is to have any rocket based on where it's located on your screen uh, be redirected towards where your cursor is generally looking. So if it's firing more off to the right and you're looking dead in the center, uh, the rocket will start redirecting towards uh, a bit more left and will follow towards the center of the screen. And last but not least, we have the heavy. And for this one, the weapon is the provisioner. With this wall active, the heavy gains plus four ammo regeneration per second and on hit, the heavy gains up to plus 3 health. However, the negatives are a 20% slower move speed while deployed and a 20% reduced max health on wearer. And on top of all this, I feel like as just a little added tidbit for my personal opinion, the uh, provisioner, when the heavy dies, the heavy will drop either health or an ammo pack based on the amount of ammo that the heavy has while this gun is active in its slot. So if it's at max ammo, uh, the heavy will drop a max ammo pack or a max health pack. And uh, scaling down from that, 50% it will drop a medium uh, ammo pack, below like 30 it will drop a small, and when it has none, well, you're getting diddly squat. So, the Provisioner makes the Heavy uh, more lasting out on the battlefield. It does not have to run back and forth between uh, ammo packs or dispensers, so it's able to sustain itself out in the middle of uh, the open. However, the negatives make sure that you don't become just a walking uh, <laughs> dispenser and Heavy combo and the reduced max health also helps to pair off with the amount of health that you quickly gain back from this weapon. Ah, <sighs> okay, so that was 12 weapons covered within this video. I hope that all of you enjoyed listening to at least one of these weapon ideas, so be sure to give this video a like. I've put a lot of effort into this, especially trying to find the freaking weapons on the workshop. Uh, I, I just wish they, they made it easier to search for these kind of weapons. But nevertheless, be sure to click the links down in the description below to also vote on the workshop pages for these weapons. It would be really nice to see these actually appear in game, whether or not they'll have these kinds of effects, I don't know. But I'd still like to see them appear sometime within the next few updates of Team Fortress 2. On top of all that, if you liked these uh, weapon ideas, be sure to also give that a thumbs up. If you don't, uh, leave your comments down in the comment section below as to what you think a good weapon idea would be for some of the weapons that you see in this video. Be sure to also subscribe to the channel so that way you can be informed as to when the next part 2 of this video is going to be released. Anyways, so my name is Topcap Gaming. thank you all so much for watching and I hope to see you all in the next video. Alright, take care.